Good morning, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. Currently, I work as an engineering manager of SDAT. In a QA field, I've been for more than eight years. And today, I'm going to deliver my promise. If you remember during our last video, which uh, link for which I will share somewhere there, I I've told you that you can pretty much self-educate yourself and get a job as the QA engineer without going for a course. It's going to be challenging, but today I'm sharing all of the links and all of the information you need to learn in order to become a QA engineer. Let's go. But before we jump straight into it, let me quickly remind you to hit that like button and a subscribe button below if you do like my channel, if you do want to help me out to become more popular on YouTube. So first one, what is a QA and what, is, what does QA engineers do? If you are not very familiar with the QA generally, please look up the article in the description at the point number one. Uh, point number two, uh, bug tracking system and Jira specifically. In a few words, Jira is a bug tracking system, which is a place where you file your bug. For example, whenever you go to apple.com, you click on a uh, login button and nothing happens, you probably found a bug. And what we do then, you go to bug tracking system and you file a bug. I'm gonna add a link right here. So click on the link above and you'll see a video which will click, quickly explain to you what Jira is and how key engineers use it. Point number three, you do need to know how to write those professional bug reports. And I have a video for you guys. It's right there. Point number four, test cases. So you need to know what test cases are. And I'm gonna add an article uh, in the description below, but in a few words, test case is a detailed instruction on how to test application. It's a detailed step-by-step -step instruction. So you as an engineer would need to know what exactly needs to be tested. Point number five, testing types and methods. Since now we know how to test application because we do have a test cases, but we do need to know what types and methods of testing are there because th that's what, uh, that will help you to answer a question when to test and how to test and what to test. Point number six, release. So you guys need to find out what release is and I'm gonna add an article at a point number six. But in a few words, whenever you as the customer receive iOS update uh, in, in the form of message saying, hey, a blah, blah, blah version is ready for you to be installed. That is release. That is the process when code goes from developer to your cell phone and you as the consumer or a customer, you can see it. Point number seven, that will be agile versus waterfall. So I'm gonna add a link uh, in the description below, but in a few words, Agile is an environment in which start, most of the startups work. It's a fast-paced changing environment. And what fast-paced changing environment means, for example, you work for abc.com and today our website is completely blue because people like sky. Everyone, everyone in the world likes uh, clear blue sky. But tomorrow for some people, everybody, everyone start talking about grass and people, and most of websites switch to green color from a blue color. So what ABC.com will do, they will switch from sky blue to green color within a week or within a couple of weeks, just because they're trying to match the market needs. So that's the agile environment. And on the other side, we have a waterfall environment, in, which is complete opposite. Uh, the best example of the waterfall environment would be financial institutions, uh, government institutions, uh, army, etc., such as bank and blah, 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 blah. So those will plan in advance for a year or two or more, and they will follow the plan. They will not change it. They will not change their scope at any reason. Point number eight, terminal. So you guys probably have seen movies where the hackers or the cats go really fast and type in quite a lot of things. And if you're like, oh shit, he's hacking something, whoa. Most of the times, uh, those are just tricks to show off. But anyways, uh, with the terminal, you can do quite a, quite a lot of things. You can talk to your computer through the terminal just, you, just the way you talk to the Siri or just the way you interact with the computer through the mouse clicks in the same way you do through the, key, uh, through the keyboard and an input in a terminal. So terminal is pretty much the command line, command line where you type in your commands. Um, and you can do exactly the same things as you do with the mouse. 
there, there is no difference except it's even faster. And you can not only talk to one computer, you can talk to many computers within the world simultaneously. Anyways, you're gonna see a link in the description above at the point number eight. Point number nine, databases and SQL. So databases and SQL knowledge will most likely be required in about 50% of QA jobs on the market. Not every company needs that, some companies will not give you access to a database, but I highly recommend everyone to learn it as it is an extra point that will show your skills and your knowledge during the interview. So database is a storage for the information and the SQL or SQL as some people call it, by the way, it's the same thing. Uh, so it stands for Structured Query Language. It is just a computer language that helps you to pull the data or pull the information from the database. In example, just for example, whenever you register at Facebook and you set up your username, first name, last name, password, email, and stuff like that, you hit register button. Information goes into a database and gets stored there. Whenever you log in, you type in your username, you type in your password, you click to log in, you, you click on login button. What happens then is that information that you just uh, you have just typed in gets validated and uh, with the information that is stored in a database. And if there is a match, then you will get a green light and you'll be able to log in. If not, you won't. That's the basics of the SQL and the databases. Awesome! These were the most important topics, in my opinion, that you do have to know when you're doing self-education or you're trying to become a QA engineer on your own. Please make sure you do your own research. Once again, it is very important for the QA engineer. And by the way, it is one of the first thing you should learn how to do is Google. Make sure you Google on your own, you do your own research aside of all of the information that we've shared right here. Awesome! Now you know what you need to learn in order to become a manual QA engineer. By the way, manual, not automation. If you guys would like to learn how to become QA automation engineer without going through the course on your own, just leave a comment below and I'll be more than glad to share all the information I can share with you guys in order for you to become a QA automation engineer. But today I want to thank you for your time. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel below. Also, we're starting next group August 31st and we still have, I think, one spot. Maybe it's already taken. But anyways, uh, if, if you still want to study, let me know. We're going to leave a link in the description below. And once again, thank you guys and I'll see you next time.